In theory of the firm, we assume that most firms want to profit maximize. That is, they want to make as much profit as possible. Now this is only an assumption, and we'll talk later on about some other goals that some firms may pursue. But as a simple rule of thumb, we're going to assume that this is true in most cases. Keep in mind that when we're talking about this, that we're talking about the short run, we know that because there's some amount of fixed costs. And we're talking about perfect competition, and we know it's perfect competition because we see the perfectly elastic demand curve faced by a firm in perfect competition because they're price takers. So keep in mind that the word marginal means additional. So we always find the point of profit maximization where the marginal revenue curve is intersected by the marginal cost curve. So here, where these two curves intersect, that point is the point where we find our quantity of profit maximization. So remember with margins that we're talking about additional profit. We're not giving anything away. It's not a trade-off. It's not I get $4 or $2. It's I get $4 and $2. So because of that, um, well, let's go through this first. So, if your marginal revenue, the additional revenue you get, is greater than the additional cost you incur, well then that's going to be a positive number. If your marginal revenue is equal to your marginal cost, then that's going to be zero. And if your marginal revenue are less than your marginal cost, then that's going to be a negative number. So keep in mind, and this is what I'm getting at when I'm talking about marginal meaning additional, if I have a positive amount of profit, and I add a positive amount of profit to it, well, a positive plus a positive is some bigger positive number. It has, to get, it has to get bigger. If I have a positive number and I add zero to it, well, obviously the number doesn't change. It stays the same. And if I add a negative to it, then that number is going to get smaller. So that's all we're trying to get at when we look at the diagram over here to the right. So we see the marginal cost curve in blue. It goes down and up. That's the law of eventually diminishing marginal returns. Have I said it a thousand times yet? And let's look at the first unit. So when I produce the first unit, well, what we're saying is that the marginal cost, the additional cost, is this value here, but the marginal revenue is that value here. So this distance in between the two would be the value, the positive value of profit I get from making this first unit. And in the second one, well, my cost went down and my revenue stayed the same, Therefore, I get a little bit more profit. That is, this line here is larger than the line next to it. Well, now costs start to come up, and we see that each subsequent line gets a little bit smaller and smaller, but they're all positive. So I'm adding positive to positive to positive, so my overall profit will continue to get bigger until I get to a point where it's zero. Now in this, and I actually did this on purpose, you see that my point of profit maximization falls somewhere between a quantity of 6 and a quantity of 7. So if I could divide it, if maybe my output is measured in kilograms, well, maybe I could make another 0 .3, uh, 0 0.3 kilograms and make a little bit more profit. So keep in mind, whenever we do this, there's a bit of a fallacy in only using whole numbers. Um, it sometimes makes the math look a little bit Okay, once I get past six though, so the next unit of output, seven, the marginal cost is greater than the marginal revenue. Therefore, now I'm starting to add a negative number, so my overall profit's going to decline. That, of course, is true for eight, and will be true as far out as we want to go from that point. So to calculate what's actually happening overall with profit, then we have to look for total cost and total revenue. Remember, profit's simply going to be total revenue minus the total cost. However, you can't see that we don't have total cost or total revenue on the diagrams. But you can easily get to it if you take an average times a quantity and make a revenue box like what we've done before. So that's the method that we'll use to establish what's actually happening in this firm. Another thing to keep in mind is that marginal cost has a relationship with average cost, that is, Marginal cost is going to hit the bottom point of average cost, as we know. Further keep in mind, though, that even though we're comparing MC to MR, they really are just coincidences. We're not, there's no specific causal relationship between the two. We see where one is, we see where the other one is, and then we determine what is the profit. 
Okay, so let's see how we're going to do this. So, first thing that we look for is the quantity at which profit maximization occurs. Just like we saw in the other diagram, it's going to be where MC is equal to MR right there. So we call this QPM for quantity of profit maximization. Now keep in mind real quickly that this looks a little different because of average cost. Remember that there's fixed costs here that aren't being accounted for in the marginal cost curve. And the average cost curve does include those fixed costs. And those are really important because there can be a major part of the costs of a single firm. So now I want to figure out what's the total revenue for this firm. Well, I'm going to do average revenue times quantity, so this times that. So this box here is going to be the size of the total revenue. Then I need to figure out, well, what are the total costs? Well, the total cost, again, is a box, and it goes up, and then again over, and this amount, uh, that's our amount of average cost, and the whole rectangle is our amount of total cost. So since I see that average costs are greater than average revenue, then clearly we're going to see a loss in this position. Well, where do we see the loss? It's easy to see if we just look at the overlap. This amount of our revenue, so the average cost is this entire rectangle, and this rectangle is our, uh, is our revenue. So the revenue pays for most of our costs, but it doesn't pay for this amount of costs right in there. So that shaded area in yellow would be the amount of loss that the firm experiences. Now let's see what happens when some part of the average cost curve falls below the average revenue curve. So again, we first look for marginal cost and marginal revenue. That's our point of profit maximization. So here. And now when we look at, again, we have this amount of average revenue. This rectangle is our total revenue. But now I can look at, okay, my average costs are there. So here, my revenue is more than paying for my average, uh, for my costs. Therefore, this amount is an area that we have a special name for, and it's called abnormal profit, supernormal profit, or economic profit. I will always use that term because I think the other two are kind of funny sounding. The point on abnormal profit is that it's greater than just what we call normal profit. Normal profit, if you remember, is an implicit cost, and it's the opportunity cost that an entrepreneur faces when they produce a product. So if I can make $50,000 a year working at a normal job, if I want to go into business for myself, I probably want to make at least that amount of money, if not some more. So I have to think about that amount of money that I give up as a type of cost. Maybe it's the amount of hours I work. Maybe at a normal job or a more normal job, I would work 40 hours a week. But if I'm going to run my own business, maybe I'm going to work 60 hours a week. So that additional 20 hours is a cost that needs to be paid for. The bottom line is that normal profit is the amount of profit that an entrepreneur has to be paid. When we talk about the payment to entrepreneurship and we call it profit, we're referring to normal profit. So this is the amount of profit that an entrepreneur needs to stay in business. If they get less than this, they won't want to be an entrepreneur anymore. If they get more than this, that's what we call abnormal profit. It's not bad for the single entrepreneur, but we'll see that it does have some other effects. So this area here in yellow is our abnormal profit um, because it goes beyond the cost. It's revenue that pays for more than just the costs. In our final diagram here, Again, we look for MCMR first. This is our quantity of profit maximization. And when we go look for AR and AC, we see they occur at the same place. So this is what we call break even. And later on in a future video, we'll talk about long run equilibrium. And it's this picture here that in perfect competition will always be established in the long run. Okay, one more observation. Notice here where we have a loss that if we follow MC, it hits MR before it hits AC, and that's going to be loss. So we can think about MR is less, or AR is less than AC, therefore, okay? Here, MC hits AC before it hits MR, so that's going to be profit, and here they hit each other together, so that's going to be break-even. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below.